Hello again, folks. Steve here with a little conversation this evening on confidence. Who doesn't want confidence, right? I remember a story actually by a guy, I think it was Gary Halbert. Some of you know Gary Halbert as I talked about him before as one of the greatest marketing guys in history. And one of the one of his buddies or one of his marketing guys that he knew sold television sets or not not television sets but sound systems it was back in the 90s when every guy wanted this sound surround big sound system tv stereo and everything hooked into their house right and these things were expensive they could be upwards of 10 grand and the guy who was selling them he realized that the guys who wanted them the most were young guys single guys so he had to figure out what those guys wanted. And obviously, you know, it doesn't take a guy very long to figure out what a young, early 20-something guy wants. Most of them, they want to get laid, right? So he had to twist somehow. He had to realize they didn't have the confidence, first of all, right? That's it's where it's coming from, right? They didn't have the confidence. So what he was selling was going to help them to get laid. He had to twist that in there. He made it in such a way that, hey, when you have this system, yours is the party house. And where the party house is where the girls are. And where the girls are, if they're hanging around you, then your chances are greater, right? So there's a lesson in that story, I think, to do with confidence. And for whatever is... Uh, there's probably no girls listening to this anyways, but if there are, I mean, just parallel into something else. I don't know what it is. I'm just mostly talking to guys here in this case. But the first thing is, he had to help those guys believe in themselves, in a way. By using a crutch, yes, and the crutch was the sound system because they needed an edge to get the party happening. But if he could get them to believe in themselves enough that this would, this would work... Then he would have to get them to somehow believe also not only in themselves but in the like the match. He had, they had to believe in themselves, they had to believe in the equipment, and they had to believe that the two together were going to work. And then he had to get them active in the process. And the process, of course, was to shell out the, the ten grand and get this thing set up and host the parties. Right? So there's three things going on there. There's believing in self, there's believing in the offer, and there is getting active in the offer or the activity of the offer. And this can be this can be looked at in, in so many different ways. I mean, look at look at going to the gym. If somebody thinks they're gonna be more confident because they're buff you know, physically stronger, that, that has a rub off within us into a, even a mental and emotional strength, right? Because now we're more, we've, we've had to put mental and emotional into that to get there. And the spinoff is we have more, it, everything kind of adds to each other, right? But we have to believe in ourselves. Like if we didn't believe at all, if we just, if we were so ill that we didn't even believe we could actually get to the gym, well, that wouldn't work, would it? But if we believe that we could actually do it somehow, then that would be a good starting point. But we'd also have to believe that, you know, the gym was functional, that we could believe our own offer in that case, or believe that, you know, for 50 bucks or however much we're going to pay, the, the personal trainer is actually going to show up. We had to believe in both of those, right? But it wouldn't matter if we believe that we could do it theoretically or that the trainer could theoretically show up. If we don't actually get involved with it at the point of where it's going to make a difference, then what's it going to do, right? What's it going to do for us? We're just going to be dreamers. That's all. Another one I like to use for a more immediate and a more practical application for confidence building for most people is once again, I'll display it in a story a little bit. 
There was somebody I was talking to not long ago who said that she wanted to be more confident. And I asked her, I said, well, did you ever consider doing any public speaking? <sighs> oh my God, no, that's too scary. Trigger point, right? It is a trigger point. Now, if we look at that, we say, okay, first of all, want and results. And the end results are confidence. And if we're going to say that confidence is that mental and emotional strength, then just like if we want physical strength, we got to do some exercise. So in order to be more confident, we got to do some exercise. Whether it's organizing that party for everybody, that it's going to help us out and it's going to build it. We've got to do something, right? I don't know yet where we can buy a, a confidence pill. I, I haven't found one. Maybe, hey, maybe somebody will come up with one. Maybe there is one that I don't know about. If anybody does know, let me know. But to me, what it is, is, is if, it's, if it's mental and emotional strength, in the similar way that we would gain physical strength by pushing up against that resistance point and stressing ourselves in that resistance point, hence growing stronger, then shouldn't we have to do that in our mental and emotional stress points as well. And for somebody who is, who wants to be more confident, but is immediately triggered by the idea of public speaking, then that might be a good idea to, it's good something to look at. Because first of all, there has to be the belief that there could be confidence, right? And then the belief that the deal, the exercise or whatever it is, could be of help, and then getting involved in that exercise. And public speaking, I'm a big advocate for because over and over again, you can do any search if you want, and you'll find that it's right near the top of the most feared, the most anxiety triggering activity we can do. And if we go up against that trigger, let it trigger us, operate in it anyway, and you know, only like asshole politicians and so on get pies in their face. Every, every other decent person doesn't get anything. We just get all agitated and sweaty palms and dizziness and want to vomit and or piss our pants and so on. And we, at first, a lot of us, yours truly included. But you know what? Over time, that subsides. And the result is greater confidence. Just like when you exercise physically, out you come with greater physical strength. When we reduce that buttress, that bulwark against greater confidence, which is this ever-present fear of public ostracism or being ridiculed or heckled or whatever it is, then we remain less alive to what we could be. And it's just talking to people. And it can be, it can be done. So I would say that becoming more confident on a practical basis, there's no better deal, in my opinion, than getting involved with some sort of a public speaking club and giving it what you got. And you can become a lot more confident. So getting a new stereo system and inviting the girls over, maybe, and yes, probably in a certain category, but in a general sense, do some public speaking, and you'd be surprised once you go up against those triggers for a while, all of a sudden, strength and confidence starts to emerge as pretty much as sure as far as I know, all the people I've seen and talked to, myself included, as sure as going to the gym or enrolling in a running course or whatever, is going to gain strengths for that area of life. So, confidence, if you want it. One man's suggestion, nothing final here, one man's suggestion, go up against the triggers, the anxiety triggers, the fear triggers that are holding back greater levels of confidence. Steve here again, great chatting. Talk again soon. Bye for now.